Welcome back, everybody. Let's play Clinical 2 Dream Jam Tournament. Last episode, just screw around with some more normal levels. Uh, you know, I took this fun resort, so the Southern Resort, the third round of the wonderful eponymous Dream Jam Tournament. And some of which have been underwater, which has been oh so fun. But speaking of oh so fun, let's head on over to this place's boarding stage and try to tackle this. These are always a fun adventure for me. It's a great way to start off an episode, isn't it? Get the annoying thing out of the first. Get the annoying thing out of the way first, though. I'm actually doing. Usually, I take a ton of tries to do something before I do want to do these, though. Uh, and the first time, I'll get very far at all. I keep doing Baron Bear's Hunt as long as I remember the uh, track, but I'm actually doing pretty well this time around, I'll be now. Kind of surprised. Although, that happened. Okay, what's that? Be, be back in a bit, guys! Alright. Whoa! I don't think this level has any dumps up over those gaps, also that water makes perfect sense. They just that big gap in the water. But, um... I don't think... I just felt it was very, very loud. Well, I, uh, I don't think there's any dumb stuff where you actually have to pick things up over a gap in this level. I hate it so much in levels to do that. These boring levels to do that because it's just it's not a good way to figure out where things are above the ground. Darn it! Ah... Okay, there we go. Oh, that was actually it. Uh, I, I was just talking about how I hate picking things up in midair because you can't see what high you're supposed to be. But anyways, that's done with, so, oh well. Bonk. Well, alright. <sighs> so, after those, like, I think it was just two episodes, no, three episodes, we finally cut back up to where I had played and bring that scrapped recording session. So right for that, we're actually making progress in the game again. So we get progress though, we have to go to this vision. Hooray! Normal, another normal stage. Alright. And it's actually a nice little place or like a cave or something. I kind of like that. This looks cool, at least. We have floating rocks everywhere. Makes more sense than a lot of other floating things we've seen, though. And... No, get over here. No! So where might we want to go? I see no reason to go up there, really. Although, unless I can bring a moo, which I don't think I can. Oh, I totally can. Boom! Alright, that was time well spent. In that case, let us hit the switch again. So what does this actually do for us using a switch? It lets us go through there for one. And I uh, get the metal, and it also prevents us from actually doing other things, so that's nice. And I have to go back back through it to turn off the switch. Hooray. And that feels like it's kind of a waste of time, except I have to get all the dream stones, so. Oh what? I can't get through here if I only have a moo. Oh wait, never mind. Arrows. I'm still getting used to how you still getting used to the peculiarities of your functions. I guess I could also just point that arrow up and well, that move of being trapped going up and down, but whatever. Works just as well. Whoa! Okay. That was unexpected. That is why you look ahead, though, using the uh, right trigger. It sounds like some like 
stupid PSA type thing when I say that, that nobody would really listen to, but it is very useful if you're trying to not get hit by everything. Since S ranks in this game are happened to be quite harsh, you kind of need to do a little perfect run of every level. I think Poco. Oh, swear you. Oh, okay. In all seriousness, like, Garland actually helped me out by giving me that water thing. So here's the thing <laughs> when my opponent tells me I shouldn't trust somebody. Oh, was I just quoting? My opponent tells me I shouldn't trust somebody. I kind of have reason not to trust my opponent. Anyways. Oh well. What do I do with this? What, what is the use? Oh, I see. Now, something I will point out, during my playthrough a uh, game that I've recently played through uh, on my own time, such as this one, I played through this game blind, and then... What? No! Why? Why do you do such a thing? Uh, usually I, I do that same thing. For example, I played through this game blind on my own time, and now I'm recording my second playthrough of it. Usually the way I do that is I... Well, usually uh, what I'll do is, during my actual uh, Let's Play of it, I will... Why are the gems up there? Dream stones are going back down. Like, accomplish it like that. Uh, what, something that I'll do is I'll usually try to replicate my reactions to things. No! No, Mo, come back! Uh, uh, reactions to things on my first playthrough. For example, uh, when I. S oftentimes, when I say certain things in response to the messages in this game, like from Swirio right there. Um, things I say are actual responses based on um, or responses that are the same as what I said when I or thought to myself when I first played the game. They're not actually indicative of what happens in the plot at all. Um, in that I'm not suggesting that something does or does not happen. I'm just suggesting I am or am not right. It's a fun little thing I like to do. So I think that makes the experience a ten more legitimate at least. Yeah, at least. Make my fake reactions something that I had actually said to myself at some point. Oh, come on. I want to hit you. Ah. Be hit, darn it. There we go. Oh, I see. I need to... Bonk. Oh, but then... How do I do that? Oh, never mind. The one was a double jumping. Go on, move. But, sometimes I'll forget to do that, and there will be other times where I say things specifically to forebode other uh, events in the game. Uh, I can't think of any examples of that thus far. But, there's surely some. I can bring a move through here. Whoa! Oh, you are... Ah! There we go. Let's see what this Ing Poco has to say. Actually, wait, no. Wait, what am I doing? Never mind. Pop car! Actually, a good example was... When I first read, uh, I don't remember what it was. At some point, I ended up thinking to myself, it was pretty early on in the game, uh, when Guntz and uh, Lola and Popo were up against each other. Well, my initial thoughts was uh, hoping that Guntz would shoot uh, 
Popcorn or something like that. Although that exact thing did apparently happen. I don't remember when it was, I thought that to myself. There was one that bring a certain message right there. That we were sent. Blank. Last two down. Let's do over here. Cool. And how might I get that? Oh, with water. But how? Up here. There we go. Well, there's no reason to raise that water whatsoever. I guess the switch is just there if you need to lower it. Although I'd imagine that they could just force you to uh, come into the stream with water down anyways. Although I, I don't see why there would ever be water there. Why is that water there? I see no function of it. Anyways. We have five minutes left in the episode. I guess that necessitates one more level. And we're actually coming up really close to this game, too. You know, I used to get through Planola games more quickly than I expect. We get through games in general more quickly than I expect when I do Let's Plays. But. Alright, we're gonna do a short level, so let's do the, uh. This level. Whoa! Oh crap, I forgot about this! Okay, so, they saw, they had the bright idea of making the <laughs> scrolling level a water level. And at least it's slower paced so you don't have to hurry as much. You still have to hurry just as much, actually. Just as much, actually. You just move more slowly. But if things are going by more slowly, I guess you have more time to, like, deliberate. But at the same time, it also means if you screw up, you have to wait longer as you go back through the level again to, uh, fix what, or to, uh, play through the level again, so, eh. Screw you, game. I can't do it that way, no. I don't want to do this. Underwater is one thing, but having to repeat an underwater level so many times whenever I screw up, I remember this one being kind of difficult, but actually, having to repeat it every time I screw up sounds horrid. You guys, you just have to sit here waiting for so long since it's just slow. I don't understand the appeal of this gimmick at all. Screw you too, game. I just don't really get what the thought process was behind it. You know, the first time I went between those two spikers, I actually did it perfectly too. First time I ever tried. I've never actually failed to get through it un un until up until this let's play, because I actually got through it on my first try. So the second try down to on, on which I failed. I don't need that life. This isn't even that fast paced actually, it's kind of well, it's a water level and then going on a two Dream Shop Tournament, so it's kind of a gun that's dull. Man. What? Why? Why do they go up so high? You try... What you have to do is jump in rhythm with the spikers, but the spikers go higher than you can jump. In that case. But see now, I wish I could just be rushing ahead. Usually what they'll do is they'll make a level, scrolling level, scroll so quickly that you have to be going full speed to get through it and pick everything up. In this one, you just kind of lull around. I even though I'm moving more slowly because I'm... Even though I'm moving more slowly because I'm underwater, I'm still boarding on the walls the whole time. God. Oh, 
That was useful. I think it's just sluggish. Although, thankfully, it should be close to the next room. Oh, hi. Oh, come on. I know I can get in through here. You don't need the flying, flying move for it or anything like that. There we go. That's this room done. Halfway through. The hover, I don't know if the hover functions differently underwater or not, but it always feels slightly different. Well, it might just be because it's so much slower. And now we're just on floating shells. I don't know. <laughs> I'm never so negative about something Klonoa related, but these water levels, I swear. They are simply not enjoyable to me for reasons I've already described. Here's this one, it's a scrolling level that goes by too slow. Why can't I do like spinning tricks and whatnot? I press the triggers, I can go to D as well. I'm gonna be so happy. If they make another Klonoa game, particularly another one for an actual console, I would love to see that exact thing happen. I would really hope that they'll include such a detail. It would be one of those really little details that just makes you so happy, like irrationally so. Was I supposed to like jump there? Well, thanks, screen. It'll be nice if you. Oh, whoa, 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 hey, no! Ah! Okay. I've been through this what like six times now. Whoa! Hi. I guess I finished it this time around. I so I can actually get to the end from here. Which I don't think there are any more hazards to be found. There we go. Get me out of here. That was painful. Just slow. Anyways, I think because of the stuff I'm cutting out, this episode's going to be a tad short, but I don't have time for another actual level in this episode. And I really I got re started recording really late again because stuff involving other people. So I do need to finish recording this quite soon. So that's going to be it for this episode. Let's play Clint on 2 Dream Champ Tournament. Next episode, we're definitely going to finish up uh, the Southern Resort. And we're going to get started on some real stuff. Actually, some big shit's going to be happening next episode. Look forward to that. Never mind everything else about next episode. Look forward to the big stuff. Because finally... Ow! I just whacked my head into a trampoline. That's nice. Um, <laughs> because ex actual exciting thing is gonna happen next episode. Hooray! Story. Because this game actually has one. Unlike Empire of Dreams. See you then, guys. Bye.